Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us. I want to talk to us a little bit about what is the famine for the word of God in the land. Well, this is found in the book of Amos, this prophet in the Old Testament. Let's read a little bit about it and see what it says about it. It's in Amos, the eighth chapter, verse number 11. And it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. So this is something God sends, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Notice it didn't say reading, but hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. So this is this place, again, that's Amos 8, 11, and 12 that God sends, that people want to hear the words of God, won't be able to. They'll seek for them everywhere. So that can really only mean one of a few things, either there are Bibles that are outlawed and that people can't hear the word of God. They can't hear Alexander Scorby, you know, here on YouTube or on some channel listening to the Bible or some of your other great Max McLean Bible narrators. Johnston was another good one. There's so many. Johnny Cash. I think he only did the NKJV or something. Um, but just so many. Or it means that people have the word of God and are not presenting it truthfully and faithfully. And so we need to be very careful that the great falling away is not occurring in before our very eyes and nobody notices. Because you can have a form of godliness denying the power thereof. People will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We should seek the whole counsel of God by the truth and sell it not. I have a love for the truth. If you don't have a love for the truth, God will send a strong delusion. People believe a lie and be damned. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. So the famine for the word of God, again, is either a time where the word of God is not accessible. We find in the book of Revelation, people will be killed for the word of God and probably are to this day on planet Earth, unfortunately. But it could be a place where people have the word of God, but they're not rightly dividing the word of God. And so the Bible did talk about in the end time, again, people would heap to themselves teacher, teachers having itching ears and evil men and seducers would wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So uh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So where the spirit of the Lord is, and that's the spirit of truth, there is liberty. So truth is extraordinarily valuable. So uh, buy the truth, sell it not, grab hold of it. My old pastor used to say something, and it came across kind of weird to me because I'd always strongholds, you know, I'm fighting demonic spirits. And he'd say, get a stronghold on truth. And I'm thinking, boy, that sounds diametrically opposed. But I know what he was trying to say. It took me a little while grab hold of it like the horns of the altar when you needed mercy you just grab hold of it because uh, with the winds of doctrine blowing the way they are and the doctrines of devils that are out there and when the son of man comes will he find faith in the earth you better just immerse yourself that's the reason he said go to church the more off you see that day approaching because the church is a pillar and ground of the truth immerse yourself in the word of god immerse yourself in the spirit of god praying in the spirit because you're going to need it to get through these times of universal deception as uh, george orwell said telling the truth is a revolutionary act so just love the truth God bless you. When you love the truth, Jesus is the truth. You'll love Jesus. God bless you. We love you. Bye.